Two years ago, the United States ranked 30th for math and 23rd for science regarding student performance as compared to other industrialized nations. For the next few minutes, we'll discuss a program that is working to inspire young people to be science and technology leaders. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum. Joining me is Dean Kamen, founder of FIRST for Inspiration and Recognition of Science and Technology. Dean, welcome to the program. It's great to be here. So, unfortunately, as I mentioned a few moments ago, um, our country is not doing uh, the best as it relates to science and technology, engineering and math, specifically science and math. You know, one person thinks, Dean, that we are the best at everything that we do as Americans. Uh, that's what we're trained to think. Um, and it's distressing to, to find out otherwise. Why is that the case? Well, I think a lot of people have recognized that this country is falling behind, particularly in the critical skill sets kids are going to need in the next generation, math and engineering and science. But I think, uh, well-meaning as they are, most of the people that are concerned about this issue think it's an education crisis. Our political leaders say that, our business leaders say that, our parents say that. I'm an inventor. What do inventors do? We look at the same problems everybody else look at and we see them differently. And more than 20 years ago, I said, it's not an education problem. My mom's a teacher. She's a great educator. We all know great teachers. So what is it that's causing America to slip? I think it's pretty straightforward. We're the freest country in the world. We're the freest culture in the world. Even kids are free to do whatever they want with their time. And learning math and science is very difficult. Very much so. And what's happened in a free country where you get the best of what you celebrate, where you get the best of what you're passionate about, kids in this country have become passionate to obsession about the world of sports and entertainment. That's where all the role models come from. Particularly women and minorities really believe their future is going to be on a stage or on a basketball court. Well, you know, court. Dean, it's interesting you say that because there's a great quote that I believe you said a few years ago. And you said, you know, most American kids, and I'm paraphrasing, most American kids believe that in order to become a millionaire, they could perhaps become an NBA star or something like that. Exactly. But the reality right. is, is that they could probably become a millionaire if, in fact, they become an engineer or scientist. In fact, the truth is, the probability that you'll ever make money playing professional sports is less likely than you'll win a state lottery. There are more lottery winners than professional athletes, but there are millions, even in this bad economy, there are millions of great jobs and career opportunities and for kids that know science and technology. And let's talk about that. Let's talk about first. What is it and what are you trying to do? Well, as I said 20 years ago when the epiphany hit me that it's not an education crisis, it's a culture crisis. We've got to make math and science and engineering and inventing more accessible and more exciting to kids than bouncing a ball. We're competing for the hearts and souls of the next generation. So I formed a sport called FIRST for inspiration and recognition of science and technology. The word education isn't in our name. We said, let's use all the trappings of sports, make it after school, make it aspirational. Don't give them quizzes and tests, give them trophies. Bring the school band, bring the cheerleaders, bring the mascots. Let's create a really passionate group of kids that believe science and technology is fun, exciting, rewarding, and a way to the future. I think you hit the nail right on the head, fun and exciting, because Dean, I have to remember, and I must confess, that when I was in high school, in junior high school, I did not find science and, and engineering and math very interesting. And I, and I recognized that part of it was maybe the teacher's fault by not making it interesting, but also it was my fault too, because I just didn't have the intellectual curiosity. But to your earlier point, you're trying to make uh, these fields interesting and fun for the student, for the child. Absolutely, and I don't think you could make football fun for a kid if you took it 45 minutes once a week and there were quizzes and tests and you had to study the field and write things. People don't want to academically study things that aren't relevant to them. We've got to make science and engineering and inventing part of what kids can do and succeed at and make it a fun experience. There you go. Well, Dean Kamen, thank you very much for, for starting this and making it fun and interesting. We have to have you back to talk more about it. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, and thank you for joining us for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum. Have a great day. Bye-bye.